That's right, you know what time it is. It's time for another FNAF VR theory that totally won't be rehashing other people's theories. At least, one can only hope, right? Anyways, I know it's been a while since we covered FNAF VR, considering it released three years ago and was pretty much picked apart by everyone from Game Theory to Fusion Z Gamer, but I think I've noticed a big part of the game that's gone pretty untalked about. But before we get into the theory, I'd just love to thank everyone watching for all the support you've given me over the years. My early years on YouTube were spent watching the creators that came before me, and I sometimes worry about upholding expectations for new generations of FNAF fans but for now it looks like I've been doing a pretty good job of that so without further ado here's to 2023 and let's get into the theory Let's start with the basic setup. In FNAF VR, we learn about the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience, a game developed by Fazbear Entertainment around the 2030s. This newer, modern Fazbear Entertainment was looking to distance themselves from their darker history, and there was no better way to do that than by laughing off all those silly rumors. In one fell swoop that could have left the series to rest right then and there if it had been avoided, Fazbear Entertainment used a set of old circuit boards to help with programming the game, a set of circuit boards containing the very last remnants of William Afton and many of his victims throughout the decades. William manifested as Glitchtrap in the game, using it as a Trojan horse to make his way back into the real world through the game's main protagonist, Vanessa. Something good to confirm right off the bat is that William didn't enter the game alone. In fact, there was a lot of other remnants housed on that circuit board with him. In Princess Quest, we get shown William in his true form, a dark, goopy, rabbit-shaped blob containing the faces of William's victims. That circuit board William came from didn't just hold remnants of him, but the whole of his last known location, Ultimate Custom Night itself. While I can't be sure right now who was doing this to William, it appears to be a particularly vengeful victim of his. Perhaps the secret seventh one hinted at multiple times in the series had sought to trap William in his own personal hell, a loop that he'd never be able to escape. At least, until he was re-released, when that particular circuit board got scanned. But remember, William wasn't the only one in Ultimate Custom Night. He was being tormented by dozens of his own creations, and it's my theory that these are in fact what make up Afton in FNAF VR. Remember, agony is what gave all the spirits that came before new life, and William went through an insane amount of agony throughout his time in his own personal hell. After escaping from the loop, William is extremely powerful and proceeds to assimilate the remnants of everything and everyone tormenting him. Now he's just a fraction of himself, using the remnants of other characters like Bonnie, Freddy, Cheek, and Foxy as a part of his new form. That is, all except except for Golden Freddy, who we don't see as a part of Afton. In fact, there's this weird spot right in the center of the blob, which looks a bit like one of the openings in the Twisted Ones for better comparison. If Golden Freddy were also a part of this new Afton, then you'd think he'd go right there in the center. So if he's not there, then where is he? Well, he, or rather she, is none other than the only other character in Princess Quest, the princess herself. In Ultimate Custom Night, the only other spirit that William can't kill is Golden Freddy, because she's got some control of what's happening in Ultimate Custom Night. In one of Ultimate Custom Night's secret minigames, we play as Casty visiting Old Man Consequences, who tells her to rest her own soul and leave William to his own demons. With nowhere else to go, Casty finally chooses to let go of her anger and drown herself in the Red Lake to cleanse her soul. Despite cleansing her soul, Ultimate Custom Night still continues, and that's because she wasn't the one causing it to happen. To keep things brief, since we don't know much about who this character is or what happened to him, William's seventh secret victim, Andrew, is confirmed to be keeping William alive to torment him in a coma in one of the FNAF books. While there's a lot of things that make Andrew and Cassie similar, like their connections to Fredbear and their hatred towards William, they actually couldn't be more polar opposites narratively speaking. When given the choice in Ultimate Custom Night over whether to continuously torment William or cleanse their own souls, Cassidy chooses to rest while Andrew gives in to his agony, choosing to continue on. The reason I'm so sure Cassidy is the one cleansing her soul in Ultimate Custom Night and not Andrew is because Andrew isn't represented as a bear. In the books, he appears as a little ghost kid wearing an alligator mask, perfectly reflecting the regret he would soon face over not cleansing his soul like Old Man Consequences had wanted. In the most ironic twist of all, Andrew's the one who got freed later later on in the book, leaving Cassidy all alone as the only one left with the power to oppose William, though things didn't exactly go that way. In the same way that William was forced to endure his own personal hell, part of his plan was finding a way to make sure Cassidy stayed out of his way. He created Princess Quest to trap Cassidy, leaving her in a continuous loop of her own memories. We know for certain that Cassidy ends up stuck in a loop because of the song that plays throughout the minigames called Caught in a Loop. We also have a perfect example of this happening to Susie in the FNAF books, where she goes through the cycle of realizing that she's dead every night, only to go through the same thing the next day until she's truly freed. In another book, we meet a girl who 
who is also trapped in a similar loop of her own memories who ends up being the missing piece to a sort of blob plaguing her in her loop, which sounds a lot like the relationship between Afton and Cassidy. Fortunately, not all hope was lost for Cassidy, with there still being a way out for her. Bear in mind, Princess Quest is divided into three separate games, but only two of those play Caught in the Loop. Those two are also the only ones that start and end in the same room, with Princess Quest 2 ending where Princess Quest 1 began. In Security Breach, we hear about an employee of the Pizzaplex digging into arcade games dotted around the Pizzaplex, who runs into some problems when he tries to play the Princess Quest games. While he's able to play Princess Quest 1 and Princess Quest 2, Princess Quest 3 will never turn on for him, which is what drives him crazy and leads him to getting fired from the company. Exit interview. They're working together. The arcades. They're hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I am so close. Just one more night, please. I can save the princess. After Fazbear Entertainment officially released the VR game for their rebrand, they end up porting it to mobile as well, which is where William puts Cassie in a loop. FNAF VR Mobile features none of the tapes and no visible signs of Glitch Trap, only the ability to glitch the game out and play Princess Quest where we once again unearth Glitch Trap. Something really interesting about Princess Quest 2 is that after surviving Princess Quest 1, we come face to face again with Old Man Consequences who is glad to see us alive after our last encounter with him cleansing our soul in Ultimate Custom Night. Since we last took the proper path of cleansing our soul, we no longer see him as an alligator symbolizing the wrong path that Andrew ended up taking. Now he's just an old man who provides us with the Sword of Light as our means to make it through the rest of Princess Quest, and when we reach the end we find Old Man Consequences telling us our journey is over and that we can now rest. Old Man Consequences is also standing in the way of a door which leads us into Princess Quest 3. Like the employee said, glitching them all at the same time is what it takes to break the cycle, and the door at the end of Princess Quest 2 is the only thing throughout the minigames we see glitching. With Gregory seeming to be the key to Princess Quest in a way no one else is, I'm fully certain that when that employee was attempting to complete the game, the door wasn't glitching for him and that's why he could not reach Princess Quest 3 or break the cycle. If Cassidy chooses to rest at this point and whether she's able to or not does not go through the glitching door, then she ends right back up at the start of Princess Quest 1 in the same room she last ended her journey in, now not remembering anything and feeling strange, maybe as if she's been here before. When Cassidy finally escapes the loop thanks to Gregory, she finds herself right where it all started, in the FNAF VR hub recreation of the FNAF 1 pizzeria, and extremely close to where Glitchtrap appears to be residing in the digital world. Although you'd think if FNAF VR was a recreation of the FNAF 1 location that William would have locked Vanessa in the safe room, this secret locked room is actually up on stage, perhaps explaining why Showtime was never made available to us in FNAF VR. To make progress in Princess Quest 3, Cassidy has to light one of these red torches like in Princess Quest 2, which helps expand on a lot of the symbolism we've already seen. The red of the torch obviously ties to Old Man Consequences, but something about that allows her to see a shadowy mirror reflection of herself who is able to light equally shadowy torches to help Cassidy progress. If Cassidy chose to take the correct path through Old Man Consequences in Ultimate Custom Night, then activating these Consequence torches allows her to see a shadowy version of herself who would have taken the wrong road and given into her agony. This idea plays into many other dark counterpart characters in the series, like Golden Freddy and Shadow Freddy, or the puppet Nightmarian, but most importantly the Princess and Purple guy, good and evil, yellow and purple being exact opposite colors. Later parts of Cassidy's journey involve retrieving the items Vanessa used to originally free Glitchtrap, but in reverse order to undo the works of William once again. These items are the Vanny Mask and the Glitchtrap plushie, which help us unlock a box hidden behind the prize counter, but for a sec let's stop and think about where these items came from. In Princess Quest 3, we navigate through a miniature recreation of the corn maze from Curse of Dreadbear, equipped with Grim Foxy and all to find Vanny's mask. But what is it about this mask? This mask, despite existing before Vanessa made her Vanny costume, doesn't actually match the suit at all, so what is it even doing in Curse of Dreadbear? Well, if there's a piece of Vanessa trapped in VR, then like many other spirits in the series, this is her soul's mask. If the Glitchtrap plushie is an objectified William and the Vanny mask is an objectified Vanessa, then obviously both of those items would be important to killing off the virus and freeing the very person it trapped. Something about this weird Vanny mask connection made me think. Is there anything else that might be hiding in Curse of Dreadbear? And in fact there is, or else I wouldn't be talking about it. When we die in Curse of Dreadbear, we have a chance to get one of four messages like report glitches before they spread and don't look behind you. But also, it's only a dream and where am I? Not once in the death messages of FNAF VR do we ever see as direct a message as where am I, and certainly not it's only a dream. That is, unless it is really only a dream. 
If we ignore these messages for a sec and look objectively at Curse of Dreadbear, there are certain things about the game that make it impossible to stand alone as a game DLC, but entirely possible if what we're seeing is actually a dream. Things like the secret scanning for glitches scene and report glitches before they spread seem to confirm that Curse of Dreadbear is at least within FNAF VR, but what contradicts this is Glitchtrap himself. In another easter egg in the game, Glitchtrap can appear dancing atop a hill in the distance, which should be impossible with him sealed away as a plushie back in the main game. That is, impossible if what we see in Curse of Dreadbear was only the game, but what if we're seeing it through the lens of someone else? Someone who's already been taken over by Glitchtrap and can see him dancing around in their mind all he wants. Just like the nightmares of FNAF 4 being Michael's dreams, Curse of Dreadbear is Vanessa's dream, a curse placed upon her through Glitchtrap's control. If there really is a piece of Vanessa trapped in FNAF VR, then she could be caught in a loop of playing Curse of Dreadbear, which is allowing those memories to seep into Vanessa's own dreams through their mental connection. Digital Vanessa is saying that it's only a dream, but still asking things like where am I, because she's probably just as confused as Vanessa is about what's happening to them. From there, the rest of Vanessa's journey starts to fall into place for us as we see the results of these dreams play out in her therapy sessions. Why is that? I can't talk about this. He said he would always be watching. He could be here or there or anywhere in between. Are you talking about your dad? Have those feelings come up again? I hate sounding like a broken record, but this is something you really need to resolve if you're ever going to be happy. I have! I compartmentalized him. He's locked away. In a similar vein to how William compartmentalizes a piece of Vanessa away in FNAF VR, she does the same to him within her own mind. However, we know this doesn't last forever when William is re-released in Princess Quest. Remember, Vanessa's mind is connected to the digital world through a digital copy of herself, and when Cassidy lets William out in Princess Quest 1, the only time where William would need to be getting re-released is after Vanessa has compartmentalized him. As of Vanessa's last therapy session, she seems to have fallen back under the complete control of Glitchtrap, right before moving to work at the Pizzaplex, and that's all because of Princess Quest. With the building already in the works by the time Vanessa gets hired as head security guard, this would also be the perfect time for Fazbear Entertainment to be working on arcade games for the place. Choose Using to port Princess Quest over from FNAF VR Mobile. Not only was Princess Quest the perfect trap for Cassidy, but it also set Cassidy up to re-release William back into the mind of Vanessa just like he wanted. From there, Cassidy waits caught in her loop for years until Gregory comes along to play Princess Quest, freeing Cassidy from her loop and allowing her to collect the two items tied to the souls of William and Vanessa. These two items light two candles next to a box hidden behind the prize counter, a box with two familiar locks on it that's now suspiciously red and open. What's in the box? It's the pieces put together, to form the key to the downfall of William Afton once and for all, eradicating him from the digital world, all trace of him from the Pizzaplex, and finally freeing Vanessa from her digital prison. And guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this theory. Make sure to tell me what you thought in the comments since I took a bit of a different approach to this video that I really enjoyed doing. As always, thank you for your support. Take some Chica Chowder for the road, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye now. Goodbye.